again, I can delete one guy. that we have digital 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? And it turns out that 2 and 3 are the interrupt pins, so if you wanted to use the interrupts, you have to uh, disconnect all this stuff, which wouldn't be hard. You could just um, unplug these two resistors and plug stuff in there, but it's obviously kind of a pain to unplug and replug. Um, you guys get some switches if you wanted and put them in there, so you could like switch it on or off. Uh, or, yeah. Someday you guys will have real programmers and so they just sort of like stick the programmer on, program the chip, take it out, and then test it. That'll be good. Uh, but so we'll talk about interrupts, right? So what happens if you have this code? Right here. You see we have, you know, some interrupts. Called time, you have function void setup. We have pin 10 being an input pin. We'll turn on the pull resistor for that pin. 11 will be the output, and we'll just sort of be doing something silly. Um, so in this loop, we're having a blinking LED, right? And this might be, this. I mean, this is just sort of a generic task that it could be anything, right? Maybe, the, maybe you're like setting different meters to different you know, states. Maybe you're reading some stuff in, maybe you know you're like doing some output, you're doing some data logging. And so you know your right control is pretty busy. <coughs> but you also want it to reset when you press a button. Or you want it to give you a certain readout when you press a button, or you want it to like scroll up when you press a button or scroll down, right? And so your controller is actually busy doing a ton of stuff, you know, all the time. In this case, all it's doing is like writing something high and then waiting a while and writing something low. Um, but if you look at this, and you press the LED right when it turns on, which is right here, and uh, so time, oh man, I totally forgot to set time. Let's say time is a thousand, okay? And then it writes low, and then it waits another amount of time, um, and then it reads your input. You wouldn't be waiting for, you know, two seconds before it reads your button push, right? And maybe this button push is really important and you can't miss it because it's not going to happen again. Maybe this is your, you know, detector that's detecting things going by, right? And so it's important that whatever sort of thing happens on this pin, or whatever event, you know, happens on this pin, your right controller listens to it and responds to it right then, or actually picks up that signal, right? You can imagine, uh, like, your smooths, right, from OnCon your DAX, right? They're reading in data, and they read in data, you know, every one second from each of the bits, right? Getting data, getting data, getting data. But maybe you want to tell it to stop doing that and reset. Um, we didn't have something like the reset pin, we would have something with an interrupt. And so what an interrupt does is exactly what it sounds like. An interrupt interrupts the program, it does something else for a little bit, and then returns back to the program. Uh, this is really important because maybe you have an encoder. Do you know what encoders are? I see nodding heads, I see people who are shaking their heads, I see people who don't know if they know what encoders are, I see people who are pretending that they know what they are, they're just giving me a weird look. Um, so an encoder is, is basically a device that picks up ticks, okay? So if you imagine that you had like a wheel, right, and you had a thing on your wheel, and it you know, would go by a photo gate or a brake beam sensor like we built last week, right? And so it's going around this wheel and it's turning the sensor on and off. Um, and this is useful for like knowing how fast you're going or something like that, right? Um, and so your brake beam sensor is good for that. But if you imagine like this is going around and you're also blinking this LED and you only read this every, uh, what, two seconds or half a second and you know maybe it goes by once this time you pick it up and now it's you know your LED's blinking and it asks is the photo gate you know did anything happen with the photo gate yet nope and then it goes back to blinking the LED and it misses one and then it goes by again and it misses at that time and now you've seen maybe you've detected one rotation where three have actually happened and so this is bad right because now you're going to think you're going one third as fast as you are um, 
you only have one thing on the field going around, right? So that's not good, because then you don't really know how fast you're going. So you might want to have an interrupt for this. Uh, so here's an example of the button, which is basically what that break beam sensor is. Um, you see we have uh, everything that's in the interrupt function has to be a volatile in. Um, but basically, so we have this thing that's attached to interrupts, and interrupts have numbers, it's not something, it doesn't make any sense necessarily in relation to pins. Interrupt 0 is actually digital 2, and interrupt 1 is actually digital 3. Um, Arduino Megas have more interrupts, and these are actually things that are like built into the chip, so you don't really have many options here as far as these interrupt pins go. They're, they're in certain places, and you can only have certain ones. Um, all right, so we have interrupt zero. It's calling the function called button, and it's on the falling edge of uh, pin number two. And so that means whenever pin number two goes from high to low, it triggers the interrupt. So if you have your pull resistor, it'll be high most of the time, right? Nodding heads. Sounds familiar. You press your button, and it connects to ground, and it'll go low. So that's when this interrupt will trigger. And so this interrupt does exactly the same thing with the button, um, sort of like the button press used to do, only now it does it every time you press the button, when you press the button, instead of maybe when you press the button or if you hold down the button for like two seconds. Is it making sense? Interrupts interrupt the program. Um, and I'll see this like delay thing down here. Uh, so this is for debounce, right? So if you, if you press the button and you hold it down and your, your button actually bounces a little bit because it's a mechanical system, right? Uh, they'll have it like trigger your, you know, it'll trigger your, your interrupt once and then maybe it'll trigger it again at another time. And since it's only on the falling edge, it'll trigger three times and then it'll stop. And so your button press will be counted as like three button presses. You don't want that. So we added a little thing here to prevent that from happening. Um, if it was, if instead of falling it was low, so just trigger the input or the interrupt anytime it's low, that would also be a problem because you hold it down and just constantly be going. So you want to add a little bit of time there so that like humans can be like, oh, I pressed the button, now I'm not pressing it anymore, uh, instead of just constantly going. And it depends on like what your system is. Maybe it's a robot and it can do things in like milliseconds, so that people take some time. Those are interrupts. They're also timer interrupts. Um, and so that's useful if you have something that's like counting up, right? So you can see like some pin and it's it's counting impulses that come in, right? Maybe you have like a an external clock, right? And you want to know when this clock is counted to one second. And so you're you're counting these pulses in, you know that at, when it hits like 1024, it's one second. And so when that happens, you turn on an LED, or the bomb explodes, or something like that. Um, don't make bombs. That's not nice. Um, yeah, so that's, I think, it for the talking today. Uh, for those of you who are here at the beginning, the plan today is to talk for not very long and build these things, which takes quite a while. And then when we get back, we will add things to make the chassis sort of go and do things like go in circles or tricks or something. Um, but we'll be making these today, so hopefully we'll draw your screwdrivers. This ease looks for some people. Alright, that's cool. Can we come get stuff? Huh? Can we come get stuff? Um, Yes, come up in pairs because they sell these as like dual completion kits, so they come in pairs. So. Oh my. You're not paired with this person for life or anything, so don't like. Exactly how we're going to marry you guys. <laughs>